why we are having revival because sometimes you get in that slump you get in that feeling where you just you don't know you just feel unmotivated or you feel like you've reached your whole network or you feel like um i don't know like you don't have enough friends or you don't have the network like i want you to tell me how you're feeling right now um and the reason i want to i want you to do that i want to know that is because tonight um we are going to hear a story um and sometimes we get feeling so great on this product it becomes we just feel normal and we're like oh we feel good um you know every day thrive is not working for me anymore or you know you just get used to the feeling of feeling good every day that you forget how you felt before thrive um and so summer love um i heard her story on a zoom on youtube um i had heard it twice and she actually did saturday impact for us this weekend that just passed so some of you have heard her story already um but i will tell you that the things that happen on our life ha that happen for us in our life i'm saying for us not to us um there's always a bigger reason behind it and it's just so funny because I am one, I believe that God puts us in a place, you know, the universe works us into situations and puts us in places and we don't understand at the time. Um, and then later on, we're like, ah, if this would have never happened, if I would have never hopped on that Zoom, if I would have never listened to that Zoom, I would have never met this person um, or I would have never heard this story. And when I reached out to Summer Love, um, I said, hi, I know you don't know me, but I heard your story and I was wondering if you could hop on a Zoom for me for a Saturday Impact Zoom. And I was wondering if you can talk to our team. Um, I know I'm asking a lot of you, but I was just, I love your story. And when Summer wrote me back, she says, first of all, I know who you are. <laughs> She said, <laughs> second of all, I manifested this. And so it's just very funny to me. You just never know who's watching one, right? And you just, you speak things into existence. You know, you, you have to speak things into existence for you. Um, and it, when I heard that response, it brightened my whole day. I was like, oh my gosh, she knows me. I'm like, oh my goodness, she knows who I am. And this is not going to be as hard to get her on a Zoom as I thought it would be. <laughs> and so we hopped on a Zoom, um, I mean, on a FaceTime afterwards, um, and after I got out of work. And we chatted for a few minutes and I learned a little more about her story. And I was just like, I, I need you, I need you for this revival. Like I, I need you to speak some life into my team, but not only that, um, we often forget what we have in our hands with Thrive. We often forget the gold we have in our hands. We let the fear get in the way of what this product can do for people. And I always tell my team, I'm like, you're being selfish. When you're not telling your story, you're being selfish because there is someone in your timeline that is the old you. There is someone in the line in front of you in the grocery store that is the old you, you know? And so we get so like, worried about what people are going to say about us, what people are going to think of us, that we don't do the do. And our duty as thrivers, as promoters, is to share this product and change lives. I bet a lot of you are feeling blessed today. We had Tuesday payday. You're feeling blessed. You got that money, you know, but we don't do this for the money, you know, and I mean, the money is nice. Don't get me wrong, but we don't do this for the money when we have stories like Summer Love. So I'm not going to go on. I'm going to let Summer Love take it over. Um, my newfound friend. <laughs> I'm going to mute out and Summer, can you unmute yourself? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear and so not everybody has heard your story. So I, I told everybody that I invited this week to just speak from their heart. So take it away, girl. Okay. If you first, if you see me looking away, I'm at the park and my kids are like, they know I'm on a zoom. So they're just going hog wild right now in the park. So if you see me looking away, that's what I'm looking at. You know, you have to have like every, your peripheral, everything going on when you're a mom. So, um, 
it's so funny because I didn't know that she was going to tell that story about how she messaged me. And I did send her a voice clip and I was like, uh, first of all, I know exactly who you are. Don't play with me. And Kayla Fox, who is my 200K upline, we were trying to get you and your husband to speak to our team. So I was like, we totally manifested this. So I am so honored and so blessed to just be able to share my story. And I was thinking this morning, I was like, oh my God, who the heck is going to want to hear this again? Like, no one's going to want to hear this again. But I have to remind myself that it's it my story is going to change someone's life tonight okay and i'm already going to freaking start crying what the heck <laughs> um little disclaimer um this is the month that i lost my mom to breast cancer um and uh so i'm kind of like all over the place i have a son that's deployed in africa right now so i am just like an emotional just wreck right now okay um so thrive found me um, at a place in my life where I had just lost my mom to her battle with breast cancer. And um, she was so sick that, um, and I don't mean to be graphic, but I need to tell you how it like truly, truly affected me. She was so sick that uh, my mom loved the holidays, right? So um, she always loved to go shopping. So my dad was going to take her out shopping. She hadn't been out of the house. She was like wheelchair bound and she couldn't do anything on her own. So my dad was going to take her out shopping and she was so excited that he went to walk away and she went to go put her shoes on by herself because she's super independent, like how she raised me. And she went to go put her shoes on and she got dizzy and she went to go brace herself. And when she went to go brace herself, she fell back on her arm and her arm completely just broke into pieces. That's how bad the cancer had already like riddled her body. So um, when she passed away, um, I, a, a little part of me did as well. I was depressed. I was, I felt like I had this black cloud following me around that I just couldn't get rid of. I felt like I was just drowning and nobody was even looking to me to send me a life raft because they didn't think that I needed one because I've always been the quote unquote strong one. So, um, I was depressed. I was in like the pit of grief. I was mean to my husband. I was mean to my kids. I was, I didn't want to go anywhere. The, sh the shades were pulled down in the house. The curtains were closed. Like I was so bad in depression that I could not wait to end my life. Like I couldn't wait. So I remember sitting in the shower one time and I was sitting there and I said, you know what, mom? I said, if you don't send something to help me, and I was bold, you guys, I was, I, I was pissed. I was pissed because I felt like she left me and I felt like God let me down because he took her from me. That's how I felt. Um, and a little backstory with that is that she served in, in, in ministry, her and my dad are, are pastors and she served in ministry for over 25 years. So it, the, the religion part hit me hard because I was like, God, how dare you? How dare you? So um, I was sitting in the shower and I said, mom, you have to send something to help me because if you don't, I'm going to kill myself. And I almost threatened her and I get out of the shower and I had been watching my friend Talissa and she was talking about how this patch made her so happy and she was so energized and she felt so good all the time. And I watched her and I thought, that's great for you, but that's not going to help me. Like I'm ready to end my life. That's not going to work for me. So, as soon as I got out of the shower, I get a message from her, from my friend, Alyssa, and she says, hey, I know I asked you before, but I want you to come on to this online party, and I want you to hear some stories, and I want you just to, you know, hop on for a little bit, get your mind off things, and um, there's going to be giveaways. It's going to be fun, and I'm like, okay. That was sign number one. I said, I said, all right. So I hop on, and um, it was Kayla Fox was on there with Talissa and I've been listening to their stories and I'm, I'm, I'm moved, you know, I was, I was broken, but I also felt like that's great for you guys, but that's not going to help me. That's not going to help me. You almost feel like when you're in that position of ready to end your life that no one else is going through that same thing you're going through. And it comes with a sense of shame 
Um, and I don't know why that is. That's just how our society is. is you don't tell anybody and nobody asks about it and they don't want to ask about it because if someone says, how are you? You're like, oh, I want to end my life today. They're going to be like, uh, what? <laughs> so no one knew. So I get onto this online party. I'm listening to the stories and I'm thinking to myself, this is not going to help me. This isn't going to help me. So as soon as that thought came into my mind, I heard summer love, you are the winner of our three day trial. And I was like, okay. All right. I get it. Side number two, right? So the trial comes to my house and I let it sit on the counter. And if you heard my story, you know, my famous, the famous four days, I let it sit on the counter. And that morning I went to take my kids to school. And that was the day that I decided that I was going to sit in my garage, let the car run, close the door and kill myself because I could not shake the grief. I could not see light. It was like everywhere I looked, it was just dark. And I felt alone. I felt like there was no hope left for me. I felt lost. And I didn't know where to turn. So I drop my kids off and I come back to the house and I'm like ready to do it, but something tells me to go inside to the house to check and see if the front door was locked. Like that's where my mind was at, you know? So I go inside the house and I didn't even make it to the front door because as soon as I went to the kitchen, I see that little pack sitting on my counter and something says, just open it. Just open it. It's been sitting there. Just open it. So I open it up and I take the capsules and I stood there at that counter just bawling my eyes out because all those times where I begged and pleaded to my mom to send me something to help me, she was listening. And I knew that it was from her. I knew it. I literally felt a weight just be lifted off of me. I felt lighter. I felt like someone came in and just like turn on some lights for me. So then she says, mix up your shake. And I was like, oh, hell no. That's where I'm going to tap out. Like I can't, I'm super picky. I don't like dairy. I don't like cheese, dairy. I don't like anything that's, I just, I'm very picky. So it says to mix it up. So I mix it up in water. And I drank it and I was like, okay, this, this has to be a joke because it's good. All right, that's step two. So then it's put the patch on. So I put the patch on. I was like, okay, where is this little dumb thing going to go, right? I put it on and you guys, it was one of the best days that I had had in probably a year. A whole year of living in darkness. A whole year of thinking when the perfect time was for me to leave. A whole year of watching my children and knowing that I wasn't going to be there to see them get married or have first dates or any type of first because I knew that I couldn't be a good mom to them. So when I tell you guys that you have gold, you have to listen because there's someone out there there's someone, I guess I know it's hard. It's hard. You get up and you're just like, okay, what do I do now? Where do I post now? What am I supposed to do here? What am I supposed to do there? Lead with your heart. Lead with your heart. And I've been able to be successful because I served right alongside of my mom in ministry. We served in women's ministry and she helped women get off drugs. She helped women gain get their children back she helped she was just like such a beautiful 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 soul and i knew that this was going to be my way of helping people but i didn't want to sell it i didn't want to promote it that was the last thing i wanted to do so i call up my friend i was like at the, at the park with my kid like i'm at the park now <laughs> i have black label on today it's a little bit different but I was at the park with my kids, playing with my kids. Like I was happy again. I was happy again. And I remember calling her from the park and I said, I don't know what you have to do, but you need to like expedite me a month's supply. You only sent me three days, girl. 
I need you. Here's my card. She's like, okay, well, what pa I'm like, I don't care what package it is. I don't care how much it costs. Here's my card. I literally sent her a picture of my card and I said, send it to my house. I knew that I didn't want to live without it. I knew that all those times that my mom was saying, Miha, take care of yourself. Make sure you're taking care of yourself because us as mothers and wives and men on here too, we're, we constantly put ourselves last. We're always on the back burner because we have that guilt. We have that guilt because how dare we do something for ourselves, right? This was the one thing that she was sending to me because she knew I wasn't going to do it for myself. She knew that I wasn't going to take care of myself. So she was sending that to me to say, here you go. Here you go. I said, I would always take care of you. Now, here you go. So I call her up and she's like, you know that you can get this for free, right? I'm like, absolutely not. I don't want to sell anything. I just got out of real estate. No, I'm not. No, I'm not telling you anything. She's like, okay, I'm just letting you know you can get it for free. And I'm like, no, I said, here's my card. Send it to me. I want it. So I get home that day. My husband's like, what's going on with you? He's like, where were you? And I was like, oh, we're at the park. We did this. We did that. He's like staring at me like, who the hell are you? Like, like I was a different person, guys. I was a different person. So he's like, what's that on your arm? And I was like, oh, it's this, this thing, this vitamin thing that Talissa sent me. And he's just like, does it come in men's? And I was like, yeah, I just bought them on supply. He's like, well, did you get me one? And I was like, did you want one? So there, there was customer number one. And then my sister, she's like, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? I was like, oh, I'm trying this. She's like, well, get me some customer number two. <laughs> then I had a couple cousins ask. So I was already thriving for free. I didn't even know what I was doing. So Talissa tells me, Hey, well, you know that you already have like six family members ordering. You could be getting paid off of those six orders. And I was like, I uh, no, I don't know. What does this involve? Like, I don't, I don't want to like, it's like, no, I feel like it's like a car salesman and no, it's just not my jam. So she's like, think, I want you to think about it because you could be making a living just doing, sharing what you're doing right now. So I said, all right, I'll think about it. So I go in the shower where I always go. That's like our mom office, right? I get in the shower and I say, mom, I know that you sent me this. Now I need to know what you want me to do with it. And if this is going to be the way that my life is going to be used to help women the way that we've always done then i need you to send me a sign because i don't want to do this if it's not the right thing to do i don't want to do this if it's not my calling because i know that i was called i know that i was called to help people sorry guys i think i don't know what's wrong with my phone can everybody hear me okay Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. Um, I know that I was called for something bigger. I know that, you know, I, I know that I have an anointing on my life. I know that I was called to serve. So I said, if this is what you want me to do with this, then I want you to send me a white butterfly. And I didn't want to promote it. So I just like picked the most random thing I could think of because I was like, there's no freaking way that I'm going to see a white butterfly anywhere. So guess what? I'm not selling anything. So I go to pick up my kids from school early, you guys, because I was thriving. I got them lunch. I took them to the park. We get home and we're coming out of the garage. And my daughter says, look, mom. And I look up and it's a white butterfly. And then she's it's like, mom, why are you crying? And I just said, that's your nanny. She's with us. Sorry. That's why I wear this butterfly. Because I know that she's with me. And I know that I was called to do this. And I know that I was called to help other people that feel hopeless. And I want you guys to know that when you feel stuck, if there's nothing else that you can think of, no other motivation, no other nothing. Remember that there's a person out there that was struggling just like I was struggling. And if someone hadn't reached out to me, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here on this call right now. I wouldn't be raising my children. I wouldn't be a proud military mom. I wouldn't be here. So don't ever, ever, ever doubt yourself. Don't ever stop reaching out. 
if you think that you've reached out to everyone, reach out to one more, like Kayla was saying last night. You never know. You never know. Show up and be consistent. My friend was just being a friend. She was being a good friend. She wasn't trying to push anything on me. She knew that I needed help. She didn't know the depths of it, but she knew that I needed something and she knew that this would be able to help me. So don't ever stop sharing your story. Don't ever, because we as just, I was gonna say women, but there's men on here too. We as humans, we're connected. We're connected because we all have a story. And if you don't tell their, tell your story, you're not gonna reach that person that you were designed to reach. You were destined to reach someone that needs this, just like you needed it. And just like he was saying before we started, if you feel like you need to restart, then stop taking your Thrive. Stop taking your Thrive for four days, then get back on it and get that feeling again. Get that feeling again. Reach out to me, I'll let you know, like this has legit changed my life, you guys. Changed my life. I jumped in and I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I knew that I just had to reach people. I knew that I had to reach people and I knew that I knew how to do that. I, I know how to do that. I know how to talk to people. I know how to share my story. I know how to be relatable because I just am myself. Show up and be authentic and be yourself. You don't have to have a story of you were suicidal. That doesn't have, if that's not your story, then that's not your story. But girl, guy, you have a story and it is powerful. And I need you tonight to stand in your freaking power, own it, and go tell your story. Stop being so afraid of what people were going to think. Stop being so afraid. You didn't think that I was afraid to tell people. So yeah, I wanted to kill myself. Like I was afraid for my kids to hear that. But you know what? It's my story and it's the truth. And they're going to look at me and say, man, my mom is freaking powerful. Look at what she's gone through. Look at what she's overcome. Look at what she's doing. She's a freaking hope dealer and she's out there helping other people. They tell me all the time, mom, I think that lady needs thrive. She's yelling at her kids. They know, they know that I have my hands on gold. They know that if they see another mother or another person that's struggling, they know that mommy has the answer. Mommy can help that person. Like, what are you showing? What are you showing not only your children, but what are you showing your team? Are you showing up like you should be showing up? Like, how dare you not with gold in your hands? And some of you guys are like auto bonus earners and you're just like, um, yeah, so I wasn't feeling it today. Like, I just wasn't led to post. We'll get a freaking pencil, touch the top of the pencil. There's your lead, go post. Go live and go talk to somebody because someone needs to hear your story. Someone needs to know that there's hope. Someone needs to know that there's some products out there that will change their life. Someone needs to know that they don't have to go and stand in the food line. Guys, right now we're in the middle of a freaking pandemic. People can't even put food on their table. They can't even put food on their table. And you're sitting there collecting your damn auto bonus like you arrived. No, girl. No. No, it doesn't stop there. And how dare you sell yourself short? Why would you sell yourself short? Why would you stop? I know some people that stopped like four, five, three thousand dollars away from their goal and they just stop. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Like you push and you push and you push. Yes. Is it gonna be easy? No but how bad do you want it? And not only that, who can you help? Who are you gonna help? If you went and closed that gap of from, from your rank to the amount that you needed, how many of those people are somebody that needed this business? That needed, they lost their jobs, they're sitting home right now, they don't know what the heck they're gonna do. But you're sitting here just being selfish, like, oh, I'm, I'm afraid. It's okay, girl. It's okay. Katie Munt had some, said something two weeks ago and she said, why are we so afraid of, of posting and talking to people on our Facebook that we don't even know personally? And if we died, they wouldn't even be at our funeral. But we're so afraid of what they're gonna think about our post. I stopped being afraid. And once I stopped being afraid, mountains moved. Mountains moved because I came showed up and I was authentic and I was myself 
and people started to get inspired. And I was like, they're like, your so story's so inspiring. I'm like, I, okay, but I'm like the girl that pooped her pants one time at Walmart. I'm sorry, but thank you. Like, I'm, I'm totally not inspiring, but I love you, girl. And I'm glad that you're inspired by me. But I just want you guys to know that you have gold in your hands. You have hope for people that feel hopeless. And I don't want you to ever, ever think that you're being salesy or you're pushing it on somebody. If you come from the place of servanthood and if you come from the place of you just want to put that person first and share with them about how it's changed your life and if they delete you, block you, whatever. But guess what? You put yourself out there and you shared your story. I want to talk about personal development really quick and mindset if I can because this is one of my favorite, favorite freaking topics. I manifest everything. Sometimes I'm like, oh, like Gandhi, like I manifest everything. Then I'll go tell people like, girl, just like I told you, I'm like, I manifested this. I knew you were coming. I knew it was just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. Like I knew it. So I, I do a lot of exercise and I can share, I'll, I'll share some of them with Kuna. Maybe she'll do it like as a team with you guys. Um, but writing things down is so, so, so important. Your dream board or your vision board has to be something that gets you up every single day. And you know what was funny is that I thought all this time because, you know, when I turned 40 that my why, oh, I'm like, my why is me. I want to do something for me. Like it's me and it's my time. And this, this, I, that wasn't getting me up every day because it was me. I was letting myself down. It, it wasn't getting me up every day. That had to change that had to change because I said, you know what? I don't want to take my daughter to, to Target and have to tell her, no, you can't get that little cute shirt that you want to get because I don't have enough money. I don't want to tell my daughter, go look on the clearance rack instead and see what's over there. I don't want to tell my kids that. I don't want to have to go to the school and get free school supplies because I can't afford school supplies on my own. And some of you are in that same position and that's okay to be there, but don't stay there. Don't stay there, especially when you have an opportunity in your hand to get out of that situation. Don't stay there because it'll be your excuse to why you can't do this, why you can't do that. You have it in you. You have to know that. And you will know that if you get up every single day and do the effing work. Do the work. It's not easy. You think that you think that people get to a certain rink because they're lucky or because they know someone that knows someone that knows some. No, they get up every day and they do the freaking work. They do the work. I get up every day and I'll play Eric Thomas because I need to hear somebody preaching and yelling at me in my ear. I can't do the like the calm, you know, everything will be okay, girl. Just, uh, I, I can't do that. I need to have somebody, no, get up off your butt, go out there, get what you need to get. Is it yours? Is it yes, ma? yes, ma? I need to be pumped up like that. I can't do the soft thing. So if you do the soft thing, I mean, more power to you, but I, that's just not me. I need to be preached at because I, I, I was raised in a church. So I need to, hear, I need to hear somebody yelling at me that you get up every day and you pour into yourself. You don't move out of the space that you're moved when you got up until you do your personal development. That should be your rule. Uh, you know, when I was in, in, in ministry with my mom, I was a prayer warrior, prayer warrior. I would not leave my house because I know the devil was outside that door waiting to pounce on me. Why? Because I'm freaking anointing. Why? Because I got a calling on my life. I know what I'm worth. I know what I'm worth. I know there's a target on my back. So I knew that I had to be clothed. I knew that I had to be armored. I knew that I had to be suited up before I left because there's something waiting that's gonna happen to you right outside that door, even in your bedroom door. Don't leave your bedroom if you haven't done your personal development, okay? Because those little kids, they're outside the door. Can I have some cereal? Then you go to pour the cereal and you're in a bad mood. You spill the milk all over the counter. Then they're like, I'll clean it up. And they clean it up and everything stick. Girl, no. Work on yourself first. And I know a lot of people say, well, I have this and I have a newborn and I have this and I have that and I can't and I don't have the time. And da, 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 da. Get up earlier. Get up an hour earlier. I didn't go to bed last night till three o'clock in the morning. Got up at seven o'clock. Why? Because I want it. Why? Because I know that my mindset has to be right. It has to be right for me to even survive every single day. 
it has to be right. Do I have a freaking, you know, 200K team? Not yet, but guess what? I'll be prepared for it. I'll be prefer prepared for whatever they throw at me. Bulletproof, why? Because I'm waking up every day putting on that personal development armor on my back, suited up, ready for what's gonna come at me. Every single day, make it a habit. Just like you get up every day, hopefully, and take your capsules. Get up every day, take your capsules and put on a YouTube video. I started to go to sleep at night with mindset things just playing right on my phone, right next to me, right next to me, because I know that I needed to take it a step further. I know that little things were triggering me. Customers were getting on my nerves, promoters were getting on my nerves, my husband was getting on my nerves, kids were getting on my nerves. And I was like, am I wearing my black label? Like what's happening? I know that I need more. I know that I need more. Those are signs where you're just like, okay, this isn't working. So you have to do that, that self inventory and find out because it can't be everyone else's fault all the time. It can't. There's a common denominator there and I'm sorry, but it's you. It's you and you got to get up every single day and do the work. Just like you get up every single day and post, you got to get up every single day, press that play, press podcast, write the notes down. Kayla said this yesterday where she's like, don't just put on something and walk around and freaking dilly dally across the house and just do that. I felt personally attacked, but I was like, okay, uh, okay, check me. Yes. Okay. I get it. So the, today, what did I do? I had my journal right there. I'm taking notes. I was like, okay, Fox. All right. I felt personally attacked because I do that. I'll put on an audio book and I'll get my chores done. I need more. I need more. I'm like a sponge. I want to soak it all up. People tell me all the time, I don't have time to get on Zooms and I don't have time to do this and I don't want to do that. And I... <sighs> then you don't want it. If the first thing out of your mouth after they say, we're having a revival, if it's going to be recorded, let's, let's just not. Let's just not. And I know that people have lives. People are busy. People, they have different time. But are you really going to watch the recording? I hope so. Because probably 85% don't. But if that's the first thing out of your mouth, and I'm not attacking anyone, but if the first thing out of your mouth is, is it going to be recorded? You never meant to show up. Your intention wasn't to show up. Because if they're telling you a week in advance, make the time. You're going to make the time for things that you want to make time for. You're going to make the time to watch that show you want to watch. You're going to make the time to clean your house. Maybe you don't. I don't know. You'll make the time for things that you want to make the time for. So there's that. And then social media is something I put in. Here come my little rugrats. Uh-uh. Not today. Not. Mm -mm. <laughs> they ran away. Um, one thing I do is I post all across social media. Um, if you guys are not uh, utilizing Snapchat, you're sleeping on it. Um, I sell happy packs, trials, whatever you guys call them, mini experiences, like crazy on Snapchat, like crazy. Um, I remember one week I had like 25 out in a week from Snapchat. And it's so much more um, one and done. Like you're just posting, like it's not a bunch of words. Nobody's like scrolling. Nobody's like checking things out. You're just posting before and afters. You're talking about this business opportunity. Okay, sorry, I get distracted. On Snapchat, I just, um, I'll do before and after. So you want your stories wherever you're at to look like a story. That's why it's called a story. So you want to begin with an intro. So for instance, I'll say, have you ever thought about giving Thrive a try or look at what the three steps are doing for some of my friends? And that'll just be wording. I make it in word swag. That's something that I personally like to use, but you can even use Facebook or Instagram itself. You don't have to go get an outside app. Then the next thing will be before and after pictures, right? Then the next, the last one will be, are you ready to try it? And then it'll be like a poll, like make sure you're telling a story and it's like seamless and it's consistent and it flows because people are gonna pay more attention to that because you're scrolling and you're like, oh, what's the next one then? If it's, you know, if it's a story. So I do that um, consistent, 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 consistent. I am consistent with um, having my stories full. I am consistent with sharing my story um, in groups. They are gold mine for me. I am in army mom groups and they are just, 
and everything to me. I'll go into groups and I'll search weight loss or I'll search tired or I'll search exhausted and I'll go and I'll bring up those old posts and I'll go comment on them. I won't, I'm not spammy and I'm not salesy because that's not what I'm in there for. I'm in there to serve and I'm in there to help. I'm not in there to just look for somebody to sell something to because it'll be a one and done and they won't buy from you again. So I'm looking to build relationships in those groups. So I'm searching those keywords and I'm making sure that I'm giving value to what the post is and I'm giving some type of um, feedback to what they're needing and what if they're saying they need more better sleep or um, appetite or any of those keywords new mom like there's so many keywords that you can think of when you think of yourself and what you can relate to like I'll look up depressed I'll look up mood I'll look up all that stuff because I can relate to that I can relate to that um, another thing is that um, I don't, I'm not organized. I know Kayla Fox comes on here with a notebook and she's got five subjects and she's got, I, I'm not like that. Everything is up here and that's just how I've always been. So be organized. I'm not telling you to do it my way because I'm a little bit like, I, I'm not normal. So um, a lot of people can't keep a lot of things in their head, but you want to just lead with your story. I can't like, share that enough because you are all different and you all have a story and you all will impact someone if you start to step into that power. You start to step into that power and stop being afraid. I remember when um, we would go into church, we would be uh, evangelizing. I don't know if a lot of people know what that is. Evangelize on the street and you're telling people about God and you're, you're inviting them to your church. And I was radical, you guys, and I'm an introvert, but you give me that mic and they're like, whoa, okay. Okay, first lady, like, I don't know what happens, right? Because I'm just so passionate about it. And I remember being on a street corner and we would be in the hood and I'm telling people, Jesus loves you and he saved my life and he did this and he did that. And I want to pray for you. And I would be praying for strangers, just laying hands on strangers because I was so radical, so radical because I know that God had changed my life. So I started to think like, why am I so afraid to tell my story? What happened to that person that was so radical? Because I got so concerned about other people judging me because I was in an MLM, because I got so concerned about people thinking, oh, she just wants to sell me something. No, it's gotta stop. So I had to check myself and I said, you know what? I'm gonna start to be as radical as I was for Jesus. Now I'm gonna do it for my products because I know that they changed my life. There's no doubt about it. I wouldn't be here if they didn't change my life. It's God and it's Thrive. So why wouldn't I share both? So if somebody wants to unfriend me or unfollow me or, or un whatever, I don't care because half the time I don't even notice. Half the time I don't even notice. Why? Because I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm not like Martha busy. I'm Mary busy. So I need you guys to be Mary busy. Martha was just doing all kinds of things all over the place. She looked busy, but she wasn't doing nothing. Okay. She wasn't doing nothing, but she looked like, oh, she was on the Zoom and she showed up and she was taking notes, but she wasn't signing anybody. And she was a, there was no fruit. The tree was dead. So don't just look busy, get busy. Don't be a Martha, go be a Mary, okay? And last thing, I've just been talking, I'm like sweating and everything. Um, <laughs> last thing is that, um, okay, we talked about mindset, we talked about posting. Um, I don't know. Now I just drew a blank. But do you guys have questions for me? Because I see the chat is like, and I get so distracted. That's why I just don't even stop to read it. I can't. I don't know, Q, what questions are there? Because I don't know. I see people asking about what the wording was. Yes, I'm going back through it right now. So I saw somebody ask you earlier, what wording do you use on Snapchat? Okay, and I think I answered that. I just do um, before and after pictures. Um, I'll let people know I never, oh, I have, this is like big for me. I, the word detox for some reason is like gold. People love to detox. Like that's all I ever say. So the other day when I was getting trials out um, and I have a degree in marketing. So I, I know, I know. Um, so I was like, okay, so people are like responding to that word detox, right? 
all right, well, I'm going to get them on the three steps, but I'm going to say, are you ready to detox your body? I'm sending samples out, right? I had a ton, a ton of comments, right? So I get them into Messenger, and these are a lot of people that are already on Sculpt and Balance, which I called my detox combo. And these people have been watching me. So a lot of them were like, okay, so wait, are these the products that I already have? Girl, I have something that is going to blow your mind. You're going to experience appetite management. You're going to experience more energy, more mood support, better sleep, better focus. I'm giving it for you for three day sample, $20. Are you ready to try this along with the sculpt and the balance that you got? Yes, 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 yes. Be confident. Be confident. You know how much these products change your life. You know how much these products help you. Be confident in that. And if you can't be confident then borrow somebody else's. Borrow somebody else's. If you can't you know, put the words down and you don't know the wording, then voice clip it. Voice clip it. It's all about what people want. And I knew that people wanted that detox, right? But I knew that people wanted, they were already on Sculpt and Balance. So what does that say? They're needing something more. And what do I have? Perfect. I have energy. I have the appetite management. I have the focus. I got what you need, right? So they were all for it. I think I had like um, 10, 10 or more um, from that uh, trials go out on that one post. And I still have to like get back to more people. Um, but pay attention to your audience. People relate mostly when I'm talking about my story. And I've told you that my mom, that my, you know, my grief came from when I lost my mom. But also in 2003, I was um, a victim of a road rage and I hate that word victim of a road rage incident and I was shot and um, the bullet went, I don't even know which side, inside my, my collarbone here and out my neck and once in the knee. I was a passenger in a car and um, I woke up in ICU. I completely didn't even know what happened. I didn't even know how I got there. I had no idea. Um, it was just a random argument. I don't even remember the argument. Um, so I, when I woke up, I had a C7 spinal cord injury. The bullet missed my spine by two centimeters and it caused swelling around my whole spine because it ricocheted. And they told me, they called my mom and they said I was 20, I don't even remember at the time. They called my mom and said, you have to come and get your daughter, bring your family because she's not going to make it through the night. So my mom gets there and I wake up and I'm like, what the heck is going on? I had no idea. And my mom says, someone shot you. And I'm just like, what? Like, who does this happen to? Like, what? Like, I'm a mom. Like, what's happening right now? So when I came to and, and, and um, got all the information, the doctors told me that I would be in a wheelchair for the rest of my life, that I would never walk again. And that my mom was either gonna take me home to take care of me or that I would go home to a nursing home. And at that point, I decided that that was not my fate. I decided that that was not happening. I decided right then and there that I was not gonna leave my two kids, at the time I just had my boys, to grow up without a mom. I knew at that point that I had to make a decision. I knew at that point that I was saved for a reason. And I knew that I had to make it through. Was it hard? Yes, I had to learn to, the first thing that I can do was pick my finger up to my nose because it was cold outside and I always had a runny nose. The only thing that I can do was wipe my nose. The first thing that I can do. Then I got feeling in my feet and I wiggled my toes and we celebrated. Then I started walking. And then that's when my legs. Oh, God, me pulling them everywhere. I'm gonna. Oh, okay. My legs literally felt like I had cinder blocks taped to them, every single step, one step at a time, one step at a time, blood, sweat, and tears. One whole year and a half of doing everything that I can do because I could, and because I knew that I had the power in me. So when people tell me, I don't know if I can share, I don't know how to do this. I want to tell you that you can freaking do anything you set your mind to. 
anything you set your mind to, but first you need to work on this mindset. That's the first thing you need to do. I want you to get your mind right. I want you to find a good book. I want you to read a bunch of different books. If you don't know, just ask, like, how, where do I start? I want you to start manifesting. I want you to start seeing where you should be at in next year, in six months from now, by Christmas. Like, you guys should be having goals that you're already working towards, that you're, like, eating the elephant one bite at a time. You don't know how you're going to get there, but you know you're going to get there. When you go and you put in your GPS, you don't know how you're going to get there. You're just trusting your GPS. This is your GPS. You don't know how you're gonna get there, but just trust up here and trust up here and you'll get there one step at a time. It might feel like cinder blocks are on your feet, okay? It might feel like that, but it's okay. I promise you, you're gonna get through it. You're gonna get through it and you're gonna come out stronger and just wiser and just more powerful than ever. But if I can leave you guys with any tip, like I don't, I do, if there's no magic, like, there's no magic to like doing this business the right way. You just show up. You just show up. There's no magic. I wish I can tell you, here's a formula and this is what you do. And you want to watch the algorithm and you want to post here and you want to post there four to five, 4.5 times a day. And when you get comments, I need you to react, but I don't want you to message the person. There's no magic formula. The only thing that you can do is work on yourself, share your story, come from a place of servanthood and show up and show up and just realize the power that you and when I say that oh my god I'm sweating when I say the power that you have within you you are a freaking powerhouse you're a powerhouse and I want you to know that because if you survived anything in your life you're powerful and we all have. We all survived different things in our life that we thought would freaking kill us. Even if it was a little breakup that we thought that we were going to die over because, you know, our life had ended. You went through it. You went through it. And you're powerful for that. So I think I talked enough. <laughs> you know, I'm like sweating even more. Does anybody have any questions for Summer Love before I oh, let her go? Oh, because her kids are in the park. Anybody have any questions? Um, Summer, you are amazing. I wish you had time to read these chats. I'm recording this, so I will send you over the comments. Everyone loves you. Um, guys, I mean, you have a product that is saving lives. You have a product that is changing lives, but you have to share from a servant heart. And that's all you need to do. Stop caring what people think about you. Stop caring what people are going to say. They don't pay your bills. They don't do anything for you. If you work a job and you die tomorrow, they replace you in two weeks. If you die tomorrow, half of your friends list wouldn't show up at your funeral. I mean, there's no reason not, you have an opportunity in front of you. You have an opportunity in front of you. You have a product in front of you. Start with your mindset because I know a lot of you, I put a poll in my chat and I said, who does mindset? Like who works, who does personal development? Um, and my two poll questions were, um, I think the choices were um, sometimes and it's a must. And I had more people that said, oh, sometimes. And I'm telling you, you have got to get your mind right. Like she said, bulletproof your mind. Bulletproof your mind, come from a servant heart, share your story. Everything else will fall into place. Summer love, I love you, girl. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> I, I love you guys so much. I feel like Thomas was gonna come, you know, at Showtime at the Apollo with the, with the cane, the hook, and be like, get her off the stage. She's Absolutely like, not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Sandman. <laughs> I will I will never sandman you. You have yeah, all the things. You're on stage trying to tap dance. I'm like, guys. <laughs> we're like recording you on Zoom that he's recording you on his phone. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's right. You'll be in his story, just so you know. <laughs> Thank you Everybody guys. So much. Content, guys. Um, if you guys didn't get a picture, snap your pictures. Snap your pictures. Everybody smile. So that we're not all looking with our mouths wide open. Hold on, <laughs> let me get there. Smile, guys.
Wait, let me do one more. Speaker view. Say something, Summer. Um, oh. Go get your mind right. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> like the like the biggest point that I wanted to make because oh my god if you only knew how much power you had and I just told Q that the other day when she's like I'm going down the two to three days at the office I'm like girl <laughs> you are powerful Thomas like, and I'm still working she was like why do you still have a job I was like um I'm working my way there <laughs> and what did you tell me what did you tell me when I said I said, girl, it is not time to dip your toe in the water. I'm going to need you to go all in with the floaties if you need them. Um, because <laughs> it's sink or swim, okay? We are not playing around. You are so powerful. You are built to do this. You guys have done some crazy freaking things. Let's just shout the Tidwells out for a second. You guys have some amazing bomb-ass leaders, okay? I have stalked them. K Kayla Fox has sent me a, a Zoom you guys did. I had stalked them and I'm like, oh my God. When she said, and I quote this, don't ever think that there's a downtime because we ranked at Christmas time. So there's no downtime in this business. You're just the one that's thinking there's a downtime. I was like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I forgot I said that. <laughs> Yes, we did. We ranked up at Christmas time. So you guys think about your Christmas, your Christmas is coming. And there's a whole lot of people that are gonna need some income coming into their families. Okay, be the one to help provide. Don't be the one that needs providing. Be the one to be able to sponsor a family this holiday season. Be the one to help that mom get out of debt. Be that one to help that dad come home and play with his kids instead of hitting the couch like Tommy used to do. Tommy used to walk in the door and go straight to the couch. And the mom guilted me was like, oh my gosh, he's been working all day, lifting refrigerators up the steps. I can't be mad at him for passing out on the couch. But guess what? When he started thriving, he came home, he got out of the car and he started playing basketball with the boys in the street. You have gold in your hands. You have gold in your hands. So I'm gonna let you go, Summer. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for hopping on Revival. I think everybody went to church tonight. Um, really quick, I just wanna say one Hi. more thing. Yes, so I looked up Revival. I was looking up quotes and it says, Revival awakens in our hearts and increases awareness of the presence of God. A new love for God, <clears throat> a new hatred for sin and a hunger for his word. You guys, be hungry for this product that you have. Don't let those people stop you from sharing because it's a sin. It's a sin if you are not sharing your Thrive experience. Look at me, changing it up. Look at that, guys. <laughs> you guys, all right. you guys, if you guys are going to do a hashtag on this, that they are all dropping and I am hungry. So if you guys are posting pictures of this Zoom, you better hashtag I am hungry. And I want to go to your page and I want to see you posting. I want to see you share your story. If you share your story, you need to tag me in it. Okay. Tag me in it. Tag the Tidwells in it because it's so powerful. It's so powerful. In the words of my, one of my great, great friends and my sponsor, Talissa, go be a bucket filler, not a bucket dumper and everything else will come. It's first the passion, then the product. First the passion, then the products. But I love you guys. Thank you so much. Post your picture, tag me in summer, and, and why don't you quote a takeaway? Hashtag hung, I am hungry. All right, guys? Love y'all so much. Bye.